Welcome back to Sky Thoroughbred Central. Still a race to come, race seven there out of Ipswich this afternoon. Between the races, uh, Michael Maxworth has been a busy man. Chris Muntz, one of our, because the champion jockey we know, all round terrific bloke and a very accomplished racehorse trainer these days. He's gearing up for a big summer carnival in Queensland, as Max alluded to, and I'm sure will elaborate. There are some really good races coming up and a bit of a revamped summer in Queensland. A lot to look forward to. It's almost upon us. And Michael Maxworthy caught up with Chris Muntz at Ipswich this afternoon. Well, the 2019-20 TAB Queensland Summer Racing Carnival is only about three weeks away. $20 million in prize money is up for grabs, so no doubt there's going to be a lot of Southerners here to take away our prize money Chris months, but you'll be wanting a piece of the action well, as well. Yeah, we'll give it our best anyway. I mean, it's always a, it's a tough time of the year, but I mean, it's um, the racing, it's, it's great racing. I mean, it's the best from around Australia. They come here for the big prize money, and the Southerners are all they're all pretty eager to take as much back as they can, but um, you know, we'll, we'll try and fight them off as best we can. Well, you were a big player, Magic Millions, this year with Boon Sara taking up a three-year-old Guineas. That must have been a big thrill for you. It was a great thrill. You know, he was, um, he was a horse that uh, really hit peak at the right time and he sustained um, a really good preparation and that finish uh, in the Guineas, it was a great finish. You know, three very yeah. good horses and a close tussle at the end, but I was just glad he, he's um, tenacity coming out in the end. And I, I remember the scenes after the race, uh, I think your, your son Corey was there and your daughter and, and Kathy, and it was just amazing for you, Grand Slam winning jockey, to win that. How did that sort of measure up in your career? Oh, look, it, it was very satisfying. You know, we, we'd all put a lot of hard work into him. We knew he had the ability and, um, you know, he, he was a horse. He's just, he's a very tough, he's a very tough, tenacious horse. And um, I knew once he sort of got to the front, he was going to take a hell of a lot of running down. So it was, a, it was a great thrill. I mean, everybody put a lot of hard work into it and it was, it was, it was nice that the family and all the owners were able to celebrate. Yep. Uh, well, the Winter Carnival in Brisbane has been established for many years and, of course, in more recent times, this Summer Carnival. But do you see Racing Queensland trying to, to make it even better? I think so. I mean, I think they're on the right track this year, particularly with the two-year-olds, you know, with, uh, with the prize money levels in New South Wales. We were getting left behind with trying to qualify two-year-olds into the Magic yep. Millions, but with these few extra races this year, it certainly gives us a, a chance to get our, our horses into the into the Magic Millions, and um, hopefully the best horses are there on the day. Yeah, there's one race that might interest you, the Gateway, worth a quarter of a million dollars. I think it's one of five feature races that Racing Queensland announced a month or two back uh, to, to really establish the carnival this year. Uh, would Boom Sara be a, a likely contender for that? Uh, it's possible. It's possible. We're still a little bit um, in uncharted territory with him, what yeah. path will actually go, but that's certainly one of the races on the, on the program. Um, but he's still got a long way to go yet. He's still got yeah. a trial a couple of times, and he's got to probably get a run or maybe two even in, under his belt before that. So we'll just have to wait and see. But um, he's come back from a spell looking really, really good, still holding a little bit of a windy winter pyjama coat at the moment, but that'll come out in the next week or two. And, and what happened uh, that day at the coast? He struck that very heavy track, and that, that wasn't him in the guineas there at the coast, was it? No, and even the next start, I just think the horse was still had a bit of uh, Magic Millions lag. He was, he'd given his all that day on Magic Millions Day, and I think he was just still flat, didn't really get a long spell after Magic Millions before the winter. So I just think he was just telling us basically he wanted a good break, which we gave him, mm -hmm. um, and he seems to have come back in good form. Now, what about your two-year-olds? I've noticed you've had a few in and out over the last couple of months. Have, have you been happy with, with a couple of them? Um, I, I was very, very happy with Kavak. He, yep. he ran super, and I think he's probably the benchmark of the two-year-olds so far this season. But, well, he did um, a great job, didn't he, given that he drew gate number 10 in that race at Eagle Farm? He, he's obviously above average. He's a very nice colt, and always has been. He's, he's been very... Um, just a bomb-proof colt from day one. He's just sort of taken everything pretty easily, and um, things just come quite naturally to him. So uh, a couple of my other horses that had trolled very, very well, um, just... I don't know what it is, turned up on race day, didn't perform on the Eagle Farm track and sort of left me scratching my head because I know they're a lot better than what they've shown so far. So we'll try to run them in a couple of races and avoid Eagle Farm and just see if that makes any difference. Now, kavak has got a bit of money in the bank, uh, a lovely two-year-old colt by D. Field, I think 42000 but you're, you're going to need more money. What's the path to the Magic Millions for him? Oh, look, he'll come back and he'll have to go through the, the usual BJ McLaughlin, Feel and Ready and those sort of races. And, you know, if he can't place or run well in them, well, he probably doesn't deserve his spot in the Magic Millions. But I'm pretty confident he'll aim up in one of them and, and um, either win or place and should put him on song for the uh, Magic Millions Day. All right. What about a couple of others um, in the road to uh, Magic Millions Day that we can follow over the next few weeks? Um, well, I mean, we've got a couple of mares there. Um, uh, 
Skate to Paris and, and uh, Smarty Pie. They're two good mares on their day, so that'll, that's where they'll aim. I'll also be trying to qualify Scathing into the Guineas, three-year-old Guineas race. He's a he's a nice horse that ran second Alligator Blood. was was um, very good that day, and he also ran second out Toy Boy. So he's a horse that I probably want to try and target the Guineas with, and um, obviously Beam Sire and Kavak. So there's probably the four or five that come to hand straight away. All right, and how do you see Queensland racing at the moment? We sort of... It pretty much rock bottom, uh, what, a year or two back. Um, uh, can you see it advancing going forward? Oh, sure. And, you know, there's still a lot of room to improve, keep on improving too. Yeah. You know, I don't think we should rest on our laurels, but we're certainly on the right path, and I think racing up here is certainly is very bright. And, um, you know, everybody's keen and wanting to get to the races now, so it's um, very exciting times.